Hello 8th grade students of New Brunswick, my name is Ryan, and in this video, I will be giving you guys a crash course on how roller coasters use energy. We'll be talking about potential energy, kinetic energy, speed, mechanical energy, the force of gravity, and even how mass affects a roller coaster. I'll be using different roller coasters from Six Flags Great Adventure here in New Jersey as examples, like El Toro, Nitro, and King Naka. First, let's go over potential energy. Let's use Nitro for this example. The ride has a long lift hill that slowly pulls trains to the top of the first drop. As a train climbs up the lift hill, it builds up its potential energy, or stored energy. Every foot higher the train climbs, the more potential energy gets added. That's because height is directly related to potential energy. Finally, the train reaches the top of the first drop. At a height of 230 feet, Nitro now has a ridiculous amount of stored potential energy ready to be used. This is where the fun begins. Next, let's take a look at kinetic energy. As Nitro heads down the first drop, the force of gravity accelerates the train back to the ground. With such a large amount of potential energy, this energy has to go somewhere. And because energy is neither created nor destroyed, the potential energy turns into kinetic energy or energy in motion. At the bottom of the first drop, Nitro reaches its fastest speed, and the more speed an object has, the more kinetic energy it has. As the train climbs up the second hill, it begins to slow down as the force of gravity acts against the train. The same way as when you jump into the air, you fall back to the ground. The train begins to travel slower, and the kinetic energy turns back into potential energy. Once the train reaches the top of the second hill, it is now traveling very slowly, so most of the kinetic energy has turned back into potential energy. The train then heads down the second drop, where the potential energy is turned back into kinetic energy. This pattern of energy use continues through the rest of the ride, but as the ride continues on, some energy is lost. While the wheels ride along the track, a large amount of friction, or heat, is created. Some of the energy of the train is lost due to this heat energy, so friction actually slows down the roller coaster. The air also slows down roller coasters because of something called wind resistance. Basically, the air pushes against the train, which also slows it down. So for the rest of the ride, each hill gets smaller, so the train continues to roll forward. The ride continues to use its remaining potential and kinetic energy as friction and the air slow down the coaster. That's why the last few hills on Nitro are so much smaller than the first hill. It's because energy has been lost to friction and the air. At the end of the ride, the train must be safely brought to a stop. Roller coasters rely on brake runs that absorb the kinetic energy of moving trains. Nitro uses a combination of magnetic and friction brakes. The magnets almost push the train backwards, kind of like when you try to push two magnets together that don't want to be anywhere near each other. Once the magnetic brakes slow down the coaster, friction brakes clamp against metal plates on the train to slow it down further. As the metal slides against the brakes, a lot of heat is created. The moving energy of the train is absorbed as heat, which thus slows down the ride. This allows a train on Nitro to come to a safe stop every time. So Nitro is considered a traditional roller coaster, meaning it features one large lift hill to build up potential energy for the rest of the ride. Now let's take a look at a more untraditional roller coaster, King Naka. King Naka is the world's tallest roller coaster. The ride stands 456 feet tall, and it does so without a lift hill. Instead, King Naka has a powerful launch system to accelerate trains to high speeds in order for them to ride over the tall hill. So while a roller coaster like Nitro relies on the force of gravity for its energy, King Naka is relying on something else, mechanical energy. Mechanical energy is a measure of the ability to do work, and King Naka's launch system is capable of doing a great deal of work. As the motor works to accelerate the train down the track, its mechanical energy turns into kinetic energy with the train. At the end of the launch, all of the motor's mechanical energy has now transferred into the moving train as kinetic energy. The train travels at a speed of 128 miles per hour. This speed and kinetic energy is enough to carry the train up and over the massive hill. Now sometimes, King Naka doesn't make it over the hill. This is called a rollback. When this happens, there wasn't quite enough mechanical energy from the launch motor delivered to the train. This means the train doesn't get the necessary amount of kinetic energy to climb up and over the hill. Going back to Nitro, it uses the height of its first drop, along with gravity, to create enough energy for the ride. But King Naka relies on the mechanical energy of its launch motor to gain the energy it needs instead. 
But once King Nakai reaches the top of the big hill, it becomes a normal roller coaster just like Nitro. Because the train is now very high in the air, it possesses a lot of potential energy, just like when Nitro was at the top of its first drop. Then as King Nakai heads down its drop, it relies on the force of gravity to accelerate the train back to the ground, just like on Nitro. Now the force of gravity is a constant, so it affects Nitro and King Nakai the same way. So the trains will accelerate nearly the same as they travel down a drop. But since King Naka is double the height of Nitro, King Naka will have much more potential energy than Nitro at the top of its largest hill. The train's potential energy converts to kinetic energy as the train rockets back to ground. This is why King Naka reaches speeds of over 100 miles per hour as it drops back to the ground, because the height of its massive hill allows the train to store more potential energy than Nitro. Now let's see how the mass of a roller coaster affects its energy and speed. For this, we will call upon El Toro. On most roller coasters, the more mass you add to its train, the faster it travels. As long as it has a good set of wheels on the track. This is because mass increases both potential energy and kinetic energy. A heavier train with more mass will carry more energy throughout the ride, and will actually complete the track faster than a lighter train with less mass. So when you add riders to a roller coaster train, you increase the mass of the train, and thus give the ride more energy. So more mass creates more speed, thus creating more energy. In this video, I show how fast the train on El Toro goes over this hill when loaded with riders. Because the train has a lot of mass, the train quickly goes over the hill because it has lots of energy. In this video, the train is empty of riders and goes over the hill very slowly. This is because since the train has less mass, it now has less speed, and therefore less energy. Watching the video side by side, you can see how much faster the train with more mass goes than the train with less mass. In fact, during test runs on roller coasters, ride operators often have to add water dummies, which are used to add more mass to a roller coaster train to make sure the train has enough energy to go around the entire track. When the ride doesn't have enough energy, this is what can happen, where the train doesn't actually complete the track and rolls backwards on a hill. To conclude, that is how roller coasters rely on a mix of potential energy, kinetic energy, speed, the force of gravity, mechanical energy, and also mass. Each is an important factor to what makes a roller coaster work, and roller coaster designers and engineers focus on these factors when designing and building roller coasters. I hope you guys enjoyed this short lesson, and maybe you'll even think about these factors when you ride your next roller coaster. And a special shout out to Mrs. Alley's 8th grade class for letting me teach you about roller coasters.